This could have been the spark that started a new civil war. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. I don't want to say the election's over, I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? Tonight, I say this to my Republican colleagues who are defending the indefensible. There will come a day when Donald Trump is gone, but your dishonor will remain. No, just what I, I've been through, I've had, I had three discussions with the president that I can recall, and in that context, I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. I didn't want to be a part of it, and that's one of the reasons that went into me deciding to leave when I did. How did that affect your perspective about the election when Attorney General Barr made that statement? It affected my perspective. Um, I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said was saying. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I mean, I, I spoke to the president. I spoke to the president several times that night. Was there anyone in that conversation who, in your observation, had had, had too much to drink? Uh, like Mayor Giuliani. And the mayor was definitely intoxicated, but I do not um, know uh, his level of talk intoxication when he spoke uh, with the president, for example. There were suggestions by, I believe it was Mayor Giuliani, to go and declare victory and say that we won it outright. Uh, one of them uh, make a comment that uh, they didn't have evidence, but they had a lot of theories. That was Mr. Giuliani. And, and what exactly did he say and how that come up? My recollection, he said, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. And I don't know if that was a gaffe or maybe he, he didn't think through what he said, but... Did anyone provide you with evidence of election fraud sufficient to affect the outcome of the presidential election in Arizona? No one provided me ever such evidence. Ms. Hutchinson handled a vast number of sensitive issues. She worked in the West Wing, several steps down the hall from the Oval Office. I was part of a conversation. I was in the, I was in the vicinity of a conversation where I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Let the people in. Take the effing mags away weapons that the Secret Service were receiving on the night of January 5th and throughout the day on January 6th. Let's turn now to what happened in the President's vehicle when the Secret Service told him he would not be going to the Capitol after his speech. The President said something to the effect of, I'm the effing President, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The President reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. I first noticed there was ketchup dripping down the wall and there's a shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall.
I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God. I think we need to quit mincing words and just talk about truths. And what it was going to be was an armed revolution. I mean, people died that day. Law enforcement officers died this day. There was a gallows set up in front of the Capitol. This could have been the spark that started a new civil war. And no one would have won there. It makes me mad because I, I was hanging on every word he was saying. Everything he was putting out, I was following it. I mean, and for me, I felt like I had, uh, you know, like horse blinders on. I was, I was locked in the whole time. Gentleman yields back. And one more item. After our last hearing, President Trump tried to call a witness in our investigation a witness you have not yet seen in these hearings. That person declined to answer or respond to President Trump's call and instead alerted their lawyer to the call. Their lawyer alerted us. And this committee has supplied that information to the Department of Justice. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, I can't say that. I'm not gonna, you, I already said you will pay. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say, Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? But Congress is certified. Now Congress is Yeah, certified. right. Now Congress is I didn't say over, so let, let me see. Go, go to the paragraph before. Okay? 